Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on amplifier. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to have an example okay, to show it to you how can we actually calculate first the power gain, second, the available gain, and last but not least, the translucent gain. Okay, so this will be the objective of this video. Okay, so this gain will determine the performance of amplifier. So therefore, it's essential to know exactly how to calculate this gain. This will be the part 10 series discussion on amplifier. So guys, if you're keen to know more about amplifier, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on amplifier. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay? Or if not, I strongly urge you guys to send me your question through the comment. Okay? So this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, ask me through the comments. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help me by like this video now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, so this diagram, I have shown it to you on a part nine series discussion on amplifier. Okay, so this is the active device. Okay, you can imagine that this as an amplifier. And in order to ensure maximum power transfer from the source to the load, so therefore, in order to achieve this, okay, we need to have matching network. Okay, both the input matching network and also the output matching network in order to achieve maximum power transfer from the source all the way to the load. Okay, so this diagram, okay, I like to highlight several so-called how to describe several power. Okay, for example, when we actually look at the input of the input matching network, okay, so this form of power, we call this available input signal power. As for the output, of the input matching network. Okay, we call this actual device input signal power. Okay, so this is the amount of power that actually sent to the amplifier. As for the output of the amplifier, you can see from here, this will be known as the available device output signal power. And then right in front of the load at the input okay, of the load, okay, we call this available output signal power. Okay, besides these four, okay, you can clearly see that there is actually two that is widely used. Okay, so basically this is where we look okay, at the source. Okay, basically we look at the source. Okay, so this is what we call the actual input signal power. Okay, as for this case here, when we actually look into the load, we call this actual output signal power. Okay, so technically, okay, the input matching network or the output matching network, okay, basically they combine together with the active device to form an amplifier, as you can see from this diagram here. So basically, this will be the source. This will be the load. Basically, amplifier will be a combination of input matching network, active device, and also output matching network. Okay, so this page here, okay, I'm going to so-called briefly describe what is system gain. Okay, so later on, I'm going to show you an example how to calculate system gain. Okay, but over here, you can see that system System game is simply just PL over P in. Okay, so system game is actually the power, the actual power that deliver to the load, okay, relative to the input power that is delivered by the source. In short, the power that generate by the source, and then we also have the power okay, delivered to the load. And when we actually do this power at the load over the power okay, that is delivered by the source, basically this will call the system game. Okay, so this is also sometimes called the actual power gain. Okay, so this will be the power gain or system gain. Okay, next, okay, so we come into a little bit different as compared to the system gain. Okay, we call this power gain. Okay, you can see that basically the gain is G, okay, which is the system gain, but we take away the loss of M1. Okay, so basically we, we assume that okay, whatever loss, okay, this will be optimized. Okay, so basically all the loss that is from this input matching network is removed. So therefore, once we remove this, basically you can imagine that the power that deliver over here will be the same as the power that deliver into the active device. 
So therefore, this is basically the definition of power gain. Okay, the power gain, okay, so basically will be PL over P in D. So you can see from here, this will be the so-called power at the load over the P in D. Okay, so basically this will be the ratio of power dissipate in the load ZL to the power delivered to the input of the two-port network. Okay, so basically this is what you mean, to the input of the two-port network. Okay, so this gain is independent of ZS. Okay, basically it will not have any so-called sequence on the ZS okay, from the source. Okay, although the characteristics of some active device may be depend on ZS. Okay, so basically this active device, okay, all the so-called the S parameters, okay, they may be affected by ZS. However, for this gain here, you can see that it doesn't has any role to play. Okay, when ZS change, you don't actually affect the power gain. Okay, so later on, you will see the formula in order to understand this better. Okay, next, okay, will be translucent gain. Okay, so where is translucent gain? Okay, so basically, this translucent gain will be the ratio of the power delivered to the load divided by the power available from the source. So basically, you can see here, the ratio delivered to the load, which is here, over the power that is available from the source. Okay, this is the gain that really matters. Okay, so basically, the power actually deliver to the load relative to the power that is available from the source. Okay, I think this is quite well explained. So basically, you can imagine that this will give us a bigger picture. The amount that is generated out from the source okay, versus the amount that is delivered to the load. So basically, this will be one of the most important gain in order to determine how much so-called power is actually transferred from the source to the load. Okay, next. Okay, will be known as available gain. Okay, so what is available gain? Okay, so available gain will be the actual output power here, okay, versus the PAI here. Okay, so the translucent gain is the power available to the load relative to the input power available from the source. Okay, so this gain is GT. Okay, we've optimized M2, that is GA. Okay, so basically, once it's we've optimized, basically, it will be GA, which means that the M2 will be optimized. Okay, so basically, GA is a system of G with lossless M1 and M2. Okay, both optimized for maximum power transfer. So basically, we will remove away M1 and M2. Okay, whatever loss we have, we basically will be removed. So basically, this is what we call as a available gain. Okay, so before I continue, okay, so basically, this is the two-port network here. Okay, you can see from here, and this part here will be at the output. Okay, so there are a few formula that we need to take note. Okay, I think I have derived this formula. Okay, but in this video, okay, we are not so concerned how to derive the formula. Rather than that, how can we actually apply the formula to solve the question? Okay, so basically, this will be so-called the reflection coefficient S here. Okay, so how you get this reflection coefficient S will be simply the ZS here. Okay, minus the Z node, basically the Z node will be the transmission line or the active device here, okay, over ZS plus Z node. Okay, same for this refraction coefficient L. Okay, so basically they will be governed by this equation. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier on, okay, so I will not do well so much. How can we actually derive this formula? Okay, I have derived this formula earlier on, okay, based on the transmission line series discussion. Okay, so if you can... Okay, you can always see the transmission line series discussion. Okay, over here, okay, I have also so-called uh, find out what is actually the refraction coefficient in, okay, which means that I, when I actually look inside here, what will be my refraction coefficient and also refraction coefficient out. Okay, as you can see from here, this is the direction that we actually see. So uh, like I mentioned, okay, let's not do well so much on the formula. Okay, so we only concern how to make use of the formula. Next. Okay, so these are the three power gain that we actually need to take note. Okay, so basically these are the three power gain which I have described earlier on. So basically denote as G, okay, as a power gain. This will be the available power gain and this will be the translucent power gain. Okay, so these are the three power gain okay, that I have described earlier on. Okay, so as I mentioned, okay, this video, okay, I'm going to show it to you how can we apply this set of formula in order to calculate all the different types of gain. Okay, so before I continue, urge you guys to help this channel okay, by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me by like this video now. 
Okay, if you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, so I will give you an example, okay, as I mentioned on the first page here. So a silicon bipolar junction transistor has the following S parameters at 1 gigahertz okay, with a Z0 equals to 50 ohm. Okay, so basically this will be the set of S parameter okay, for a two-port active device here. Okay, the source impedance is ZS is equals to 25 ohm and the load impedance is ZL equals to 40 ohm. Okay, so we are tasked to compute the power gain, available power gain, and also the transition power gain. Okay, so let's see how can we do this. Okay, so this set of formula I have shown it to you on the previous page here. Okay, so take a look over here. So this will be the two set of formula. Okay, so this will allow us to calculate the reflection coefficient S and also the reflection coefficient L. So this word minus means that Okay, as you can see from this equation here, minus means that ZS is smaller than Z0. Again, for this case here, for when it's actually minus, you can imagine that ZL will be smaller than Z0. Okay, for Z0, it's actually 50. So over here, you can see that ZS is equal to 25 and ZL is equal to 40. Okay, so the smaller the number, okay, the bigger the reflection coefficient, as you can see from this set of formula here. So the first task, I'm going to calculate the reflection coefficient Okay, at the source and also at the load. So next, let's continue here. Okay, so next, how am I going to continue to calculate the reflection coefficient at the in and also at the out? Okay, remember this is a set of formula. Okay, so what is S11? Okay, I have put the useful equation that is given okay, over here. Okay, so you can see that S11 is equal to 2.38 okay, minus 158. This will be in degree. So this will be S11. Okay, S12 and S one okay as you can see from here okay so this will be s12 okay this will be s21 and this will be the reflection coefficient l which i have found it on the previous page okay which is shown over here okay so this will be one minus s22 so s22 will be 0 0.4 okay and the phase will be minus 43 degree as you can see from here okay and then reflection coefficient l over here okay so I have put this link here okay, in order to facilitate the calculation. Okay, so if you can, okay, I will put this link into the description. Okay, so instead of calculator, you can actually work at a so-called PC here. So if you enter the equation correctly, okay, so basically you should be able to find this answer. Okay, so this will be the input okay, reflection coefficient. Okay, so basically this will be the input coefficient. As for the output coefficient is another set of formula. Okay, so again, if you do what I have analytics over here, you should be able to find the reflection coefficient at the output here. Okay, so basically, we are ready to calculate the three gain. So the first one that I'm going to show it to you will be the power gain. Okay, so the power gain equation, okay, is what I have shown it to you over here. Okay, so I just put the equation over here. So now I need to put the so-called no number into the equation. So S21, okay, when we actually have this magnitude, okay, which means that I only want to take the magnitude of S21, okay, which is 3.5 over here. So remember for this case here, you need to describe them in so-called polar and I'm going to take only the magnitude, okay, which is 3.5 over here. So this is one minus, okay, so basically this will be the reflection. Theta L, this is a minus sign here. Okay, so therefore, I can remove away the minus because again, this is uh, so-called the modulus or magnitude. There is no negative number. So it becomes this number here. Okay, so one minus, again, this will be the reflection coefficient at the input here. So this is what I have found over here. So it will be 0 0.365. So therefore, I put it here. And one minus S22 okay, will be 0 0.4 minus 43. And again, this will be the uh, reflection load reflection coefficient okay for this case here because there is no modulus so i need to consider the minus here so if you do this correctly and when you actually punch your calculator okay you can actually realize that the power gain will be 13.1 okay so basically this is the gain okay of the active device 13.1 for the power gain okay so once we've done this again you can see that we are also available to calculate this available power gain. Okay, so again, this will be the set of formula that is used to calculate the available power gain. Okay, again, if you sub in all the value, for example, S21, 
okay, will be the so-called the magnitude, 3.5. Okay, so basically, this will be the magnitude. Okay, 1 minus, for this case here, this will be 1 minus here. So this is going to be the source reflection coefficient, okay, which is minus 0 0.333 over here. Okay, you can see this number here. Okay, so this will be 1 minus S11, okay, which is 0 0.38 minus 158, which is shown over here. Okay, and then theta S here will be minus 0 0.333. Okay, so basically this will be, you need to punch this separately from the calculation. Okay, if your calculator is not that powerful. And then next, this will be 1 minus. Okay, so basically this will be the magnitude. So I only take the value of 0 0.545. And if you punch the calculator correctly again, you should be able to calculate that the available power gain will be equals to 19.8. Okay, last but not least, Okay, let's quickly go through how can we actually calculate this translucent power game. Again, this formula, okay, I have shared to you earlier on. How can we apply this formula? Okay, so by now, I guess you don't have any issue how to get this S21. Okay, so basically, it will be at the magnitude 3.5. So that's how I get this 3.5 here. So this will be 1 minus, okay, which is shown here, 1 minus, and the so-called the source reflection coefficient, okay, will be minus 0 0.333, as you can see from here. So on another term here, this will be 1 minus, and this will be the load okay, reflection coefficient. And you can see that it is actually equal to minus 0 0.111. Okay, so therefore, I have this number here. Okay, as for this case here, the 1 minus, okay, you can see here, 1 minus here. So again, this will be the source reflection coefficient. As you can see that it will be equal to minus 0 0.333. Okay, and then uh, this input reflection coefficient, okay, remember, you still need to concern about the phase also which is 0 0.365 minus 152 degree, which is over here. On the other side here, this is 1, okay, which is here. 1 minus this will be S22. Okay, S22 will be equal to 0 0.4 okay, with a minus 43 degree phase, as you can see from here. And finally, this load reflection coefficient is equal to minus 0 0.111. And if you put it here, and if you punch your calculator correctly, okay, the translucent power gain should be equal to 12. Point six. Okay, so over here, I just want to do a very quick comparison here. So over here, we can see that the biggest power will be the available power gain. Okay, so this will be the biggest power. Okay, and then from these two numbers, 12.6 and 30.1, you can see that this will be the second number. This will be the worst scenario, which is called the translucent power gain, okay, which is 12.6. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.